Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's very busy forecast we'll be talking about a winter storm that will be impacting part of the United States we'll also be talking about the severe weather potential with the potential for even a few tornadoes we'll also be discussing tropical storm Nicole and as well as a huge cold blast that will impact almost the entire United States you're not going to want to miss it let's first begin though with what's happening across the United States over the next few days beginning with all of our different systems Systems. We right now have a obviously a subtropical storm back to the east of Florida. This will be making landfall late Wednesday night into Thursday morning, impacting the state of Florida, and this will eventually impact the entire east coast. So more on that here in just a moment. We also have a high pressure ridge currently dominating back up in the northeast. That is why this tropical storm will be making landfall over Florida. And we also have a trough that is going to bring severe weather and a winter storm back over here on the western side of the United States. Over the next several days, we'll see that develop and really start to have it strengthen into potentially not just a winter storm but it also could produce some severe weather maybe a tornado threat over in the midwest so we'll have to watch that very closely on the other hand again winter storm most likely going to occur in the northern plain so definitely keep a close eye on that after that we have our hurricane or potentially a tropical storm or hurricane it's gonna be one of the two more details on that later in this forecast that'll eventually impact the mid-atlantic regions and then a lot of rainfall and potentially a little bit of snow could come to the northeast so again more on that here later in this forecast on the other hand, though, we're talking about a big cold blast coming to the United States. The Climate Prediction Center is forecasting nearly the entire United States to be below average over between the 6 to 10 day period, which is this Sunday through next Thursday, especially across areas really from Texas and back out to the north. It's going to get very cold next week. Make sure you have your jacket ready, your winter stuff ready, because again, temperatures are going to drop substantially going into this upcoming week. All right, over the next few days, in terms of that winter storm, Storm. we are expecting it to really develop going into late Wednesday night into Thursday morning so a lot of snowfall will begin around Wednesday night we'll also see some showers and maybe a couple of storms on the eastern half of this trough eventually by about Thursday afternoon we'll still see snow on go across North Dakota in some instances we could see some heavy bands of snow so if you do have any plans on traveling which I don't recommend make sure you're taking it slow on the roadways eventually going to late Thursday into Friday this system will eventually move out for the most part the only remnants of it will just be a few snow flurries maybe some light snow back up in northern Minnesota going into late Thursday night into Friday morning maybe a couple of little flurries as well back over in Wisconsin heading into Friday afternoon overall snowfall totals are going to be pretty substantial we're talking the potential for 12 to 18 inches of snow in parts of North Dakota on the other hand most of North Dakota will at least see somewhere between 6 to 12 inches of snow so again a lot of snow is going to come out of this especially if you're in North Dakota more minimal amounts over in Minnesota we could see some snowfall totals upwards of 6 to 12 inches and in ice isolated areas but for the most part we'll be seeing mostly just some flurries back up maybe closer to three to four inches up through areas in central and northern Minnesota and as I mentioned earlier in this forecast it is going to get very cold very quick across the United States all the reds are indicating on this temperature anomaly above average temperatures the blues the pinks whatnot will be representing below average temperatures and heading into this upcoming week by Thursday into Friday the initial cold blast will be felt across the northern and central plains so really across the Great Plains is where we'll begin to see some of the cool down begin. On the other hand, the eastern half of the United States mostly going to be warmer just due to the fact we have that ridge that will be dominating back up in the northeast. It'll eventually move out, but then we'll have that tropical system. That will bring more humid and as well as warmer air to portions of the United States. Eventually heading into Saturday and Sunday, though, that cold front becomes much stronger with that trough, and we will see temperatures plummet across the United States, especially back over in the Mississippi Valley, where we will see temperatures again drop substantially. And eventually heading into Sunday to Monday, it will continue. We'll have rounds of colder air most likely going into next week. So this will be a elongated amount of cold air. It's not going to just last a couple of days. This could last upwards of a week. So it's going to be cold for a while. Again, be prepared with your winter jacket. And for those that are wondering, what does that mean for the actual temperatures? Well, going into Sunday morning, which probably will not be our coldest morning of this upcoming week, we'll see temperatures sub-zero back up in the Dakotas. On the other hand, we're still looking at below freezing temperatures across a large area of the United States. That could dip down into the panhandle of Florida and even into the portions of Texas. So again, it's going to get very cold next week. And you might be thinking, we're done, right, about this trough? No, because we will actually have a chance for severe weather, potentially a few tornadoes. There is 
is a slight risk of severe weather back over in the western midwest into the central plains this is mainly for the potential for damaging winds and a few tornadoes on thursday so this will be a day to watch pretty closely there is a marginal threat as well that extends through kansas into wisconsin so again it's a pretty large area heading into thursday so this will be more of a daytime threat wednesday it's going to be dry but then heading into thursday morning we'll have a little line that develops i don't expect too much in terms of a tornado threat during the morning but that will ramp up heading into the early afternoon hours so eventually by about four o'clock or so definitely a better chance for a few tornadoes embedded in that line i'm not expecting anything in comparison to that tornado outbreak that we saw back last friday but we might see a couple of tornadoes and again they'll probably be on the brief and weak side but definitely be prepared just in case because there could be very well a few tornadoes embedded in that line heading into friday that will start to diminish as that trough does move much quicker over to the northeast portions of the united states now we have big discussion about the tropics there is currently tropical storm nicole which is subtropical right now but is forecast to become a tropical storm this orange area by the way is representing the wind field which is enormous it's going to cover the entire state of florida almost once this system does make landfall so if you're in florida you are definitely most likely going to see some sort of tropical storm force winds unless you are on the uh panhandle of florida so again big changes coming to florida but a potential for this to become a hurricane does exist it might become a category one hurricane before making landfall overnight wednesday into thursday morning there are already tropical storm warnings in effect for almost the entire east coast of florida and hurricane watches in effect we do have hurricane warnings for the bahamas as well so definitely make sure you're getting prepared just in case again wind will be a big concern but storm surge also definitely be a big concern as well most computer models have this coming towards areas on the east coast somewhere in between about uh, jacksonville florida back through about melbourne is kind of the area where this might make landfall so you can expect the highest wind gusts to be in those areas so what does this mean for the storm surge across florida well at this point we are expecting between three to five feet of storm surge almost on the entire east coast of florida there could be a possibility for isolated amounts higher up to six to seven feet especially wherever this does make landfall which the most likely area right now would be somewhere here along the east coast back through about st john's county back through melbourne so again make sure you're prepared for that and especially if you're on the coastline make sure you're listening to local officials with any evacuation orders that are being issued all right what are we talking about in terms of wind gusts out of the system where will the highest wind gusts be well on tuesday later tuesday night into wednesday morning wind gusts will pick up to 40 miles per hour along the east coast of florida eventually heading into wednesday those amounts could get even higher so wednesday night we could be talking upwards of 50 to 55 miles per hour right along the coastline and once this makes landfall closer to thursday morning wind gusts will probably peak upwards of 70 to 80 miles per hour can't roll out some isolated higher amounts especially wherever this does make landfall hr model is indicating it'll make landfall closer to port st lucie which if it ends up doing that wind gusts will definitely be higher further south but if we're further off to the north if it makes landfall near daytona beach for example we could very well see wind gusts much higher up that direction so i'll we'll have to be monitoring that uh trend really over the next 24 hours pretty closely what does this mean in terms of the rainfall across florida well there will be a possibility for some flooding especially where this makes landfall so there are there is a potential that some areas do see upwards of six to eight inches of rain can roll out some isolated amounts higher than that on the other hand we'll see most of florida at least see somewhere between one to four inches of rain again higher amounts so definitely possible it seems like where the rainfall will be most uh, known is going to probably be somewhere between about palm bay and daytona beach so make sure you're prepared for that it will not be as bad as hurricane ian by any means but it will still be a lot of rainfall so flash flooding is definitely not out of the question we could also see some isolated tornadoes along the east coast of florida there is actually a marginal threat for that wednesday night into thursday i did forget to bring that up earlier in this forecast all right what are we expecting long term with this tropical storm well it is going to make landfall again sometime late wednesday into thursday morning it will eventually ride up through florida and into areas in the southeast most likely by friday morning eventually getting into saturday this quickly rolls off to the uh, northeast uh, with that jet stream again starting to steer it further off to the northeast towards areas like new england so there is definitely an expectation that we'll see a lot of rainfall back up in the northeast make sure to like button down below subscribe if you've not already this forecast is brought to my platinum contract